Welcome to Electron Online. This is actually a really good example to differentiate between the concept of force, net force, and power when a force is pushing an object up an incline. Now, in all these examples, A, B, C, and D, we will have a constant velocity. Notice on A we have a 5 meter per second velocity, here we have a 1 meter per second, 5 meters per second, and again 1 meter per second all the time the velocity will be constant. In the first two examples, A and B, we have no friction between the block and the incline. For C and D, we do have friction. And for the last two uh, letters here, C and D, we are also going to find the power. And uh, well, I shouldn't say it's equal to zero. I meant this to be a question mark. What is the power under those circumstances? The answers are actually quite amazing. Very, very non-intuitive and that's the problem with physics sometimes our intuition will actually lead us astray so let's go ahead and try to figure out the answers to these first of all let's start with a we have a constant velocity the block is being pushed up and there's no friction and we're asked to find the net force now, of course we always use newton's second second law that f net is always equal to the mass times acceleration but in this case, since the velocity is constant, the acceleration will be zero. So therefore, we know that the net force in that case must be zero. So even though we're pushing a block up the incline, the net force on the block is equal to zero. However, that said, the force that pushes the block up the incline, well, that is not going to be zero because the net force is going to be equal to all the forces aiding the motion of the block minus all the forces opposing the motion of the block. And so in this case, that's going to be equal to the force F aiding minus this component of the weight mg sine theta, which is pushing the block down the hill. So uh, let's see here. So that's mg sine theta. And of course, since the net force is equal to zero, from here we can then conclude that the force pushing the block up is going to be equal to mg sine of theta. We don't have to worry about the friction component because in part A, friction is equal to zero. So what happens when we push the block up at a different speed? Instead of five meters per second, we're doing it only at one meter per second. Does that make any difference? So for part B, the answer is no, it makes no difference because, again, there will be no acceleration, so therefore F net must be equal to zero. And since there's no friction and the F net is equal to zero, again, for the very same reason, we can say that F is going to be equal to mg sine theta, which is kind of strange that it requires the exact same amount of force to push the block up the incline at 5 meters per second versus 1 meters per second. It's kind of strange, but true. Now let's go to part C. Now we have friction involved, and in addition to that, we're also going to calculate the power required to push the block up the incline. So first, we're going to again calculate the net force, and we're going to calculate the force. So for part C, F net, again, we don't really have to even calculate it, we realize that there's no acceleration. Even though there's friction, doesn't matter, there's no acceleration because the velocity is constant. If there's no acceleration, the velocity is constant, then there's no net force. So again, we can say net force equals zero. How about the force now pushing the block up the incline? That's a different story because now not only do we have to oppose the mg sine theta term, we also have to oppose the friction force between the block and the incline. So here we can say for part C that the net force, F net, is equal to all the forces aiding the motion of the block minus all the forces opposing the motion of the block. In this case, there will be two. So here the net force, which is zero, is going to be equal to the force pushing the block up minus the mg sine theta component minus the friction force, which is the normal force times mu. In this case, the normal force is equal to mg cosine theta, so it would be minus mg cosine theta times mu. So here, we can then say when we solve for f, that f is equal to the sum of both the mg sine theta 
plus the mg cosine theta times mu. So it's simply the sum of the two forces. Now here, that's the magnitude of the force. The direction, of course, is in opposite direction. We're pushing the block up, and the other two forces are pushing the block down, or at least trying to oppose the motion of the block going up. Finally, to part D. Now, oh, wait a minute, we're not done yet. We still have to calculate the power in that case. Now, the definition of power is that it's equal to work divided by time. And work can be defined as force times distance divided by time. Now, what power are we calculated? We can't use the net force because the net force is going to be zero. And of course, zero power will not get the block up the incline. It turns out that we have to use the force that pushes the block up and we're calculating the force, the power required to push the block up at five meters per second. So in this case, F will be this force right here times the distance divided by time. Well, distance divided by time, that's the velocity. So this is equal to the force times velocity. And in this case, the velocity is five meters per second. So we can say that the power for in part C is going to be equal to the force applied, which is equal to mg sine theta plus mg cosine theta mu f times the velocity, in this case, five meters per second. So now let's do that again, but now we're going to slow the block down to one meter per second. We're still pushing the block upward. Does anything change? So for part D, the answer is the net force is still going to be equal to zero. How about the force pushing the block up the hill? Well, notice it does not depend on the velocity whatsoever. It only depends on the component of the weight that pushes the block down the hill and the friction force that opposes the motion. So therefore, we can say that F, exactly the same, will be mg sine theta plus mg cosine theta times mu. So the net force doesn't change. The force required to push the block up the hill doesn't change. It's still the same, even though we're doing it at a different velocity. But what does change is the power. The power, we know, is going to be equal to the force that pushes the block up times the velocity, F times V. So in this case, it's going to be F, which is, of course, mg sine theta plus mg cosine theta mu, multiplied times only one meter per second. So the difference is that it requires the exact same amount of force to push the block up at one meter per second versus five meters per second. However, it takes five times as much power to do it five times as fast. And that's where the difference lies. And this is how it's done.